Jane Martins. Um, I've been a psychotherapist of uh, Baron. Um, but today, what I would want to encourage you as the family, we know that uh, Baron has been in rehabilitation and is progressing very well. So to avoid relapse, relapses, relapses are uh, whereby someone can go back to some habits if he's not supported. Mm. So a family has to come in because it's like my work is done in the, in the hospital. Mm. So it's now your turn. However, I can be backing you when you need me. So the most important support that you need is to keep on encouraging Baron to do her Core, his core activities rather. I'm praying together with him, looking at him as the former baron that he knew, not the former baron he knew when he's, he was always high, because he's very new. Mm. You don't need to always tell him sarcastic words. He's a very new person. He has rise to everything that a family has to offer. Meet the Tumwebazes. Frank Tumwebaze is the managing director and proprietor of Water Solutions, a company that he formed and that deals mainly in supplying borehole pumps, generators, solar power for industries, and home appliances, among other things. Rose Tumwebaze is a pastor and starting businesswoman. Together, they have four children and live in a quiet neighborhood in Mutungo. On the surface, you would think that this is a perfect family. But life would have it that they face one of the most trying time in their lives because of drug abuse by a member in the family. This is Baron's story. I never expected that he would do, get involved into that. We used to play. We are very good friends. We even brought badminton and we used to play chess, like board games, and snakes and ladders. He used to say he'd be a medical doctor or what, or an engineer. Uh, but uh, all of a sudden, things started changing. Baron started abusing substances from as early as primary five and later started narcotics drugs in secondary school. It took over six years to notice that something was amiss. started with spirits. I kept on drinking, drinking, drinking until my vacation. During my vacation, that's when I started learning other drugs like marijuana, there is Kuban, Mirage. So I used to test a bit. By that time, I was testing. That's the time when he backslided in academics, and he was. We were requested that he should uh, repeat. And then at that age, of course, with others and the financial crisis and all that, then I asked the mother, and I was wondering, should we accept this and all this? Then we were like, no, let's not accept this. Let's take him to another school to try and push him so that he can uh, be able uh, to complete the uh, level at a certain good age. But I think out of that backsliding, that's the, I would imagine, I'm not so sure that would, would have been the beginning of, of, the, of, of, the, of the drugs. I went on learning other drugs, there is opium, which I can sniff, there is office glue that also can act as a drug. It was a shock when we were there at one afternoon. He, he told us for him he started this thing six years ago. So when I considered six, six years ago, it went up to almost uh, S, uh, S1, almost after P7. Is it true that he was uh, taking these things in the seminary? school there too. I think they are proving but then the, the the administration doesn't know about it. Yeah. 
many visits during the sea just because now when I go near like close to a dustbin I find some some areas of that one. And I really wonder in such a school where there's all the spiritual internal forces and all that and such a thing can happen. So he said you go to Budo. Is there, are there other people also who you use? There? Yeah, there are very many, my classmates. But then I tell them, and I tell them what happened to my brother, and they're like, maybe he took it in excess. They don't think it's, they don't think it's a problem. They carry it to school. They, all, they arrested some boy at school for bringing in alcohol for his friends on VD. But they don't learn. In the real beginning, I was uh, putting him to, uh, to, to, to schools that, um, that have uh, a Catholic setup. What I would say, Baron was brought up from uh, seminaries because he was in Sanjere Seminary, in, which was a primary. Up to P7, he passed well. Then I took him to Nyenga Seminary. Seminaries bring up, bring up kids in that disciplinary environment, and there you find they are super in everything academics. By the time I finished my senior four, I didn't perform well. Yeah, I didn't perform well due to the drugs because I reached a time during I was. In the time we were sitting for the finals, uh, I used to drink before I go to the paper. Like when I have mathematics today in the morning, I go behind the toilets, I take some drink or I smoke some weed. So many times when he comes back from school, he starts moving from, from friend to another one. We don't know where he has eaten, I don't know. That's why he started all those habits. Some of these drugs could not they, they never had a strong word, a strong scent. So I could come in with my drug in the pocket, take my drug in the bedroom. I could sometimes hide, I could close my bedroom, inject myself heroin or take cocaine. Then after I come out, they never knew, I made all the things clear. No scent, no what, but I was doing things normally. Yeah, they came to realize maybe it was alcohol, it had a strong scent. I know I know Jackson. Nobody not my aquarium. I have a woman and been a great and it's a talk when I call. And you could hear something smelling, something funny smelling, but you say maybe it's not what you said. You people go back and bathe. You may be something is you have taken long enough to bathe, and as boys they suddenly hide, they don't want to bathe. Men. But that thing is one. Every time we never enter, if feel something smelling, this is what is it. Then I tried to check in his things, check, check around. Then I saw a uh, police. Then I asked the, 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 the sister, what's this? She said it is me, 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 When did you first of all register your brother started using drugs? No, I didn't notice. I was told by the housemaid. She told me that your brother is not fine because he goes to the toilet and he drinks the things from there, drinks the drugs and everything. So at one time, he told me, hey, Daddy, you know, for me, I sport in exams. You sport? You are in a boarding school? What do you mean you sport? You don't have time to read? But I became rough and he said, some of these things bore me and then he said, things bore you? In a boarding school, I'm paying over 600,000. Everything is there. Teachers and everything, you know, you, you are telling me things bore you? So should we get out of school and what? I said, yeah, daddy, uh, me, I want to be a DJ. I collapsed. It was a 
like midnight called me Mandy in town. I said, what can I do? Right? Imagine someone is calling me. Come on, I will see you tomorrow. Because they, they have hired me not to do my DJ work. And then when he came back, he said oh, this man was stolen. And he came back in the morning. You imagine like a parent, how do you feel? Someone is telling you that he's in town and you don't expect him even to be in that scene. And you don't know where he is. And he's a DJ, you know. Those people, sometimes they fight from there. You don't know whether he's there in the tunnel. You don't know where he's alive. You don't know. And I felt like, now what can I do? He's mine, he is mine. I cannot live with someone. He's my own firstborn boy. At first, I felt like crying. I mean, most especially the, fir the first time they told me he's at Butavika, I was like, eh came to this so I I was not well but I had to keep strong I, I wanted to cry because I've never seen my brother like that I knew him as a strong person never gets sick or is fine but I had to move on it's a, it's a, it's a bit difficult to uh, put together but uh, the first time when we were admitted in the private, it was too much. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, that was like that. a million. Yeah. And then afterwards, he tried to move. I was taking food every day because he, he was like, Mama, you can, cannot take portion. And since he wanted him to be okay. there, not moving around, coming back. And that's why I said, I'm going to try my own list, make sure he gets food from here. Then I will take food every time. And uh, afterwards, we are getting a new school, plus requirements and whatever. It took like also and, uh, like 1.5. Yeah, you see, I think uh, it, it, it's true. Uh, we, we, we might uh, not know the, the real, the real possibility of that. But when you, when you start from uh, the, the money we lost at school when he was doing nothing, you know that one is also part of that. The best school fees in the town for him is very busy. Smoking, he doesn't, he doesn't work home. Send me some money. Yeah. So, the money is sent. Yeah, the money is taking his money. Yeah, and then, and then also, uh, the, uh, the, 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 other, the other issue I talked about is uh, he, he's of saving. You know, I've lost a bed sheet. My mattress is stolen. How can the mattress be stolen? So, it, sometimes he comes back to, to home without anything from seat to bed to books and all that. So all that, if you put it together, it's it's actually a lot. Then the, the, the drugs, then then the stress, and then that time you you deliver food. You deliver food, you know, every you know, breakfast, lunch and all that, you know. And then they, you know it's a lot. It's a bit difficult to put put down but it's it's, it's a lot. My father had lost hope in me. He thought that I couldn't change. He thought that ah, this boy is wasted. I don't need even to pay for him school fees. That's, was, that's affected me, but it affected him more than me. Then to my parents, I mean to my mother, she never lost hope. That's great. That's the only person I had that had to help me throughout the family and to advise other family members. So it also affected my brothers and sisters. Seeing me drunk, coming back at, coming back in the morning, coming back when I'm drunk, I've lost all my properties that I went with. The climax of Baron's drug abuse came at 20 years of age, when one day he came home battered and in dire need of medical attention. An ordeal his entire family will never forget. What did he tell you when he came and were that in that mood? What did he tell you? He, he, to, he told you what? He told me that he, four guys had jumped on him and then 
they tried to battle up with him, mm. so he also fought his way out and took off. Lost the phone and they worried. And the phone worried, they like a lot tell of me. money. Please help me tell mommy that I really need to go to the hospital and see my tooth and everything. You explain to me, here is hurting, there. Just tell mommy that this and this, the tooth is falling out. And that day he came when he was wild. That day, the whole, the clothes are like torn. Then the sister wanted to clean him. I had a visa somewhere. Then he tried to, to push the man, tried to fight. We had to lock the gate. He wants to get out. He tells us, leave me alone. I'm going to beat you. But that was my worst moment. I don't even remember that day. It was very scary. I could hardly sleep. It was so, so threatening. I felt small. Which other support do you think I can, we, we as hospital Tarika, we um, can still offer Bangu? Just keep, keep encouraging him. Um, because sometimes you, you feel like he's not. He's thinking about of he feel like taking a bit. That's the big problem we're having. He's like, I feel like taking it. That's the thing. I don't know how we are going to go about it. That's very good. Actually, you are even blessed that he can tell you the way he feels. Mm. Yeah, so if he tells you the way he feels, the support you have to give him, you have to ensure him that those are feelings. The fact that being that he's an addict, those feelings will always come back. Mm -hmm. So what you have to help him is to make sure that he's always having something to eat with him. Yeah, you can give him snacks, for example, dinners, biscuits, juice, so that those feelings are suppressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But sometimes he feels alone, so he needs somebody to tell him. We are by your side, we are going to be with you. We do that, but then, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think you get on this. So Baron, how would you want them to help you in this journey? Uh, they should help me as they advise me. And if I go wrong, they should tell me. They should be frank and they tell me, you know what, brother, you yeah. are going astray. Yeah. Stay focused. Family is the first thing that can help you. It is about time we inform ourselves of the identifying factors of addiction and learn of ways we can help people with the characteristics of an addiction disease. Let us reach out and stop the stigma towards addiction patients. One, one bad thing I've seen with drugs, you remain, remain in, a, in a, like you're in a, a prison. You, you, you are there, you want to get out, but you don't have somebody to, to get you out and you, are now, you continue uh, on that line. That was his position. Home? Home is okay. Mm. How are your parents? They are fine. They are so happy to see me changing. Mm. Do you have any complaints so far? Which challenges do you meet out there? We can't rule out that the fact that you've been an addict, craving can go forever. That one, you know it. So I want to know when you crave. I'm not saying you're craving every day, you get, but I believe you, as a person who has been smoking for a very long time, that craving must be coming. So what do you do if it comes? Now for smoking, it normally comes in the morning, or it comes when the weather has changed, whether it can be cold, it can be sunny, sunny. If it comes, I can take a cup of tea. Thank <laughs> you. 